Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to part two of launching our first EC2 instance. Let's go back over to the AWS console. Okay, so here I am in the AWS console. I'm in EC2. Down here we can see all the details about our EC2 instance. So we can see which key pair it's using. So it's using my US East 1 key pair. We can also scroll down and we can see that termination protection is turned on. This is a true value. Uh, we can see a whole bunch of different stuff, including our IP address, your uh, DNS address, your public DNS address. You can use this um, this URL and you'll still be able to browse uh, to the Hello Cloud Gurus webpage. In here, we've got our status checks. So there is this comes up a lot in the SysOps Administrator Associate. You've got a system status check. This is checking the underlying hypervisor. So it's checking the actual physical machine. And then we've got our instance status check. This is actually going and checking the EC2 instance itself. You can hold over here and have a read of it um, by holding your mouse over the little eye symbol. In here, we've got our monitoring. Now we are gonna do CloudWatch uh, later on in uh, this section of the course. We can turn detailed monitoring on for this EC2 instance. And here we can see our CPU utilization, we can see our network, we can see um, uh, different disk utilizations, status checks, uh, etc, etc. And we are going to go in and create our own uh, CloudWatch metrics and dashboards uh, later on in this section of the course. And then in here we've got our tags, and this is what we set up when we first, uh, you know, uh, provision this EC2 instance. Now I can go up here and I can do different actions. Um, I can go in and stop my instance. I could go in and try and terminate it, but you see here I can't click this button and that's because termination protection is turned on. If I wanted to turn it off, I just need to go over to my instance settings. In here we can see we can do a whole bunch of different stuff. So we can add or replace roles. We can change our termination protection. I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes, disable. I'm now able to go in and go terminate. And if I click this button here, it will terminate that EC2 instance. I'm gonna leave it running so that we don't have to keep provisioning EC2 instances. There is a couple more things I wanna show you though. So over here, we've got different things that we can do. We've got our spot requests, we've got our reserved instances, dedicated host, scheduled instances, and then capacity reservations. If I click on reserved instances, I can go in and start to purchase my reserved instances. Uh, and you can go through and have a look at um, the different types. So you could say you want Linux, uh, you want a standard tenancy, um, in here you could say I want a T2 micro, uh, you know, super large, whatever. Let's go T2 small. Term, let's go straight for the 12 to 36 months. Let's go payment option uh, all up front. And then you could go and hit search and that will show you these different instances. You can then go and add these to your cart. So if you're uh, ba basically purchasing a T2 small for 36 months, uh, effectively it's gonna be $229. Uh, and that's gonna that's pretty good rate when you think about it for a virtual machine in the cloud for three years. You can only pay 300 bucks or less than 300 bucks, 229. Uh, so that's how you go and purchase reserved instances. Let's go back over to the EC2 dashboard. And before, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit launch instance. And I just wanted to show you um, some more things. So we're gonna launch an Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Uh, we're gonna leave it as default, and we're gonna leave this as default. So in here, this is where we add our storage. And we've got our root device volume. So that's our volume type. And our root device volume, like I said in the last lecture, simply means where our operating system is going to be installed. So where are we installing Linux? Or where are we installing Windows on our C drive? So that's all a root device volume is. In here, we can see the size, so it's going to be eight gig. In here, we've got the volume type. Now, there's only three different volume types in here uh, for our root device volume. We've got um, general purpose one, GP2. Um, so this is general purpose SSD. We've got provisioned IOPS um, or IO1. Uh, and then we've got magnetic. So these are our two SSD uh, volumes that we can have. And then we've also just got standard magnetic in here. In here, we've got our IOPS. So if we were to use provisioned IOPS, we would start at 400 IOPS. If we were to use general purpose, it's going to uh, have a baseline of three IOPS per gig uh, with a minimum of 100 IOPS and burstable up to 3000 IOPS. And if you haven't heard the term IOPS before, it just means, it just means input output per second. Um, and essentially it's how fast your hard disk 
drive is. And here we've got delete on termination. So if we were going to delete our EC2 instance, um, are we going to delete the root device volume along with it? Well, yes, we are. And in here we've got encryption. So it used to be that you couldn't encrypt a root device volume uh, right from the get-go. You can definitely do it now. Um, so do remember that going into your exam, you can encrypt your root device volumes. And here we can add a new volume. Um, so we've got our volume type. So we've got EBS volumes. Uh, in here, we can adjust the size. Note that the volume type now changes. So we've actually got five different volumes. We've still got our general purpose SSD, our provisioned IOPS SSD, and our magnetic standard. But we have two additional volumes. We've got our, got our cold hard disk drive, and then we've got our throughput optimized hard disk drive. And this might be useful for things like data warehouses, etc. And cold hard disk drive is just our very uh, cheapest form of storage. And we are gonna cover off all the different volume types later on in the course. Um, so you might want um, throughput optimized and you might want that at 500 gigs. Uh, and that will tell then tell you the throughput in megabits per second in here. Um, so we get between um, basically 500 uh, megabits per terabyte. So because we've only got 500 gigs, we're gonna be looking uh, at between 20 to 123 megabits per second. Note that delete on termination is not automatically ticked for your additional volumes. Um, so if you went in and provisioned this EC2 instance and then terminated it, it would delete the root device volume, but it wouldn't uh, delete any of your additionally uh, attached um, you know, volumes to that EC2 instance. And again, you can also add encryption in here. So I'm just pointing out this now. If you do hear me say in the course later on um, that root device volumes cannot be encrypted, that's no longer the case. They definitely can be encrypted. It is a popular exam topic now. We will look later on in the course as to how we can take a unencrypted root device volume and go ahead and encrypt it. There is a process that you have to go through and it becomes a very popular exam topic, both for EC2 as well as RDS. And we will cover that off later on in the course. Let's go ahead and have a look at my exam tips. So my exam tips, just remember that termination protection is turned off by default, so you must turn it on. When it's turned on, then you can't go in and automatically uh, or accidentally terminate your EC2 instances. Remember that on an EBS backed instance, the default action is for the root EBS volume to be deleted when the instance is terminated. So if you go in and terminate your instance, it's going to delete the root device volume, but any additional uh, volumes by default won't be deleted. So that can be a thing that comes up in the exams a lot. Also remember that EBS root volumes of your default AMIs can now be encrypted. You can also use third party tools such as BitLocker for Windows to encrypt the root device volume, um, or it can be done when creating the AMIs. And we're gonna show you how to do this in a lab. Um, you can also do it using the AWS console or using the API. So we do have a lab coming up, which will show you how to take an unencrypted root device volume and go through a process to encrypt that. And that again is very popular exam uh, topic. Uh, but like I said, just remember that your EBS root volumes um, for your Amazon AMIs can now be encrypted as well. And also remember that you can take additional volumes and encrypt them as well. So that is it for this lecture, everyone. You have learned an awful lot about EC2 so far. I hope you had lots of fun logging into your first EC2 instance. In the next lecture, we're going to look at security groups. And security groups are basically just virtual firewalls that control traffic to our EC2 instances. So if you've got the time, please join me in the next lecture. Thank you.